once again and welcome everybody to the Grateful Chef Kitchen. I am the Grateful Chef Eric Eisenbutt and of course always grateful that you are with me to cook together and uh, help me make these recipes a success because I do not know everything there is to know about cooking um, and I learn as much from you as you learn from me I hope. So welcome this week we are doing one of my favorite cuisines and it is Chinese food and I want to dispel the myth that Chinese food is difficult because it's not. It's a little bit of an uh, organizational um, challenge but the actual cooking of it is very easy. The ingredients more today than ever are available to uh, most of us I would say. Um, so and we're going to talk about the ingredients in a little bit. A little bit. I want to uh, wish for everybody who is in those areas of the country right now that are colder than Mount Everest, is what the news is saying. Um, I hope that you are all warm and safe and your families are safe and uh, that this ends pretty soon, quickly, I hope. So, um, again, thank you to all the people that have are, are viewing for the first time. Uh, and if you are, please tell us who you are, where you're from, and again, we're really grateful that you're joining us. Uh, share with your friends the link to this group and get them to join the group so they too can see it every week. And uh, as always, I ask that you show the world that this is something that they should be viewing by uh, liking and subscribing to my YouTube channel and um, also my Instagram, uh, the Grateful Chef EE is my Instagram name. So please, let's bump those numbers up. It's um, how this becomes uh, popular. So the more people that join those things, the more uh, people say, hey, maybe I need to join this thing. So hopefully you're enjoying this as much as I am. As always, we uh, have our board. Oh, before, I don't wanna forget. So last week was our 10th episode of The Grateful Chef. And I could not be more grateful. Lynn and I are super grateful to have you guys in our lives and uh, to be welcomed into your lives by uh, being able to do this each and every week. Um, so, task at hand. Gong Hai Fa Choi is Chinese New Year. It is upon us. Uh, Chinese restaurants around the world and around the country get jam-packed and it is an absolute celebration and um, we are going to partake in that celebration. Uh, hopefully you have really good uh, Asian markets around you like I do. If not, there are plenty of online sources to use to get uh, some of the ingredients we're going to talk about to get these little festive uh, celebratory things for the Chinese New Year. Um, anyone who may be uh, Chinese who's watching, uh, maybe my friend Kathy who couldn't be here tonight. Hopefully I spelled this right. Uh, this year is the year of the pig and uh, you can tell it art is not my forte, but you can still tell it's a pig. So it is the year of the pig and I couldn't be more happy we're celebrating that um, with uh, Two dishes that I'm making and a couple of items that I bought at the Asian market. Because um, I'm just not there as a sh uh, Asian chef, you know. So I haven't graduated to making my own sticky rice in lotus leaf. So I bought them and it's perfectly fine. They're absolutely delicious. Lynn, do you have some of those? We have Paul Boyle this night. Hello, Paul. Hope you're safe and not cold. Swapna and Martin. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We're going to have a lot of fun with this menu tonight. Um, so the first dish that I, we are going to make, we're actually going to make the shredded potato dish first. But the main course of this dish is Kung Pao chicken. It is pronounced Gong Bao Ji Ding. And it is um, a very simple dish. And I find the more authentic of, uh, of a restaurant that you go to, the fewer ingredients there are in each dish. They are minimally handled, minimal, minimally 
process, fresh ingredients, cooked in a snap, and they are absolutely delicious and clean, just clean. So Szechuan is the cuisine that we're visiting tonight. And um, Szechuan uh, sauces are an oil-based sauce. So a lot of that red chili oil um, and Szechuan peppercorns. And I want to show you Szechuan peppercorns. So these I bought online from a, from a place called the Mala Market. Started as the Mala Project. And this place, um, we have access to all sorts of great Szechuan ingredients. Mala means um, hot and numbing. So that numbing part comes from the Szechuan peppercorn. Szechuan peppercorn is available in red. They, they are green as well. Um, and it is the, it's a little bud that, ha that grows on the prickly ash tree. So you might see them in the market um, with prickly ash on the label. You see, I have some the Szechuan peppercorns in a dish here. I'm going to show you. So these are the red ones, and I don't know if you're going to be able to see without me spilling them all over the kitchen. Um, through the bathroom. They are little tiny buds, and they are not spicy, but they are spiced. So this, what happens is if I if you chew on this, you actually get a numbing effect on your tongue. It's really cool. I don't know any other uh, food product that actually creates that sensation. It is a numbing and it's um i enjoy it and i want you to not be afraid for those of you who say oh i don't really like spicy food so szechuan food is spicy but not in a, a jalapeno or a habanero spicy way those things if you eat those peppers it lingers and it stays with you with szechuan food you'll find that it doesn't blow your head off when you're eating it and five minutes after you're done eating, the, the heat is gone. There's no sense of heat left in your mouth. Lynn. I just read, when you get a chance, there are a lot of highs that I All right, let's go. Them. I'm ready. All right, we've got Paul Florio. Greetings from Daytona Beach. Paul, uh, not have, frozen. Uh, well, actually, he is. They got the, oh, yeah. They've got the heat on 50s. and socks on. Uh, <laughs> I saw your mom and dad as well. You've got Alicia Duncan. Carol and Lynn. Yes. Uh, awesome. Uh, hey, so... Uh, Alicia, Alicia is Abilene, Texas. Nice. She, Not frozen. Yes. Uh, Dave Mallow said it's warm at Barrister. Oh, of course uh, it is. <laughs> uh, we've, we've got Nino with us. Julie loves the pig. And my favorite thing is that Daniel Fish is taking notes. Nice. Thanks, my brother, Danny. Good to see you here. Or hear that you're here. Here, here. Um, anyway, enough with the bad jokes. So let's go to the board right now. Gong Pao Ji Ding, it's Gong Pao Chicken. It's very simple and few ingredients again. It's chicken, it's ginger, it's garlic, it's um, chilies, it's Szechuan peppercorns. So 98% of the restaurants you get Gong Pao Chicken in, there's broccoli stems, there's diced uh, red bell pepper, I call filler ingredients that is an Americanized bastardization, dare I say it, of the real Gong Bao Ji Ding. Simple, and we're going to show you exactly how to make it. Um, the next dish is a shredded potato with pepper. Now, you're wondering, I've never seen potato on a Chinese menu. And you're right, because um, it's not very common. Um, not, even in some of the authentic restaurants, it's not common. But it's becoming more common. And it's a delicious dish. It's shredded potatoes. I'll show you here. I did it on my mandolin, and I will show you how to do it. Um, and again, simple ingredients. Ginger, garlic, chilies, peppers, scallions. Really not a whole lot of, lot of things in there to mess it up. So we're doing that. Um, I'm also cooking those items that I got from the market. And it's sticky rice, and it's wrapped in a banana leaf. And it's really good. You get them with just vegetables in them. Sometimes you get them with uh, some beans. Sometimes you get them with bean and meat. I think I got the meat ones if I was able to read the sign correctly. But we find out when we open the package. Um, we had as a coffer, as we say, for our guests that's in the studio audience, Sabrina once again. Sandra and Chris are also here. 
It's awesome. And uh, you too can come here. If you're in the neighborhood around a Wednesday, reach out to me and see if we can, we can fit you guys in. Um, so we did some steamed pork dumplings and, of two different kinds. We did a soup dumpling and we did a small regular dumpling. And I got some other things, potato chips at the Asian market from China in a spicy crab flavor and a beef flavor. And they're actually from a brand you're familiar with, Lay's. This is what the package looks like. Sabrina, thank you. This is the spicy crab. And uh, yeah, they're really interesting. And they taste like it. And they taste exactly like it. So different flavors, different tastes from around the world. Yes, Lynn? Just wanted to point out that you're not doing dumplings on the show tonight. I am not. We ate them already. We already ate them. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Sorry. If guys. I'm going to do dumplings on the show, we're going to make dumplings. I promise. So. And that's why we're not doing dumplings on the show. We've got, All right. we've got Nick Johnson with us, and Nick. special guest sitting on Paul Boney's knee is Jake. All Hi. right. Hello, Jake. Oh, yeah. Nice. And, oh, and Kathy, she was able to come watch us. And how did I do on the spelling? I hope I did well. Anyway. And we also have Spock. Last thing, I've had this for a long time. This is a prosperity pig. Very appropriate for the year of the pig and rub it, rub the little bumps on it, put some money in it, money will come back to you. Prosperity for you and your family. I need to rub it. Yeah, a lot of restaurants have one in the front of the store. Rub it. Trust me, it's like rubbing the Buddha belly. Okay, let's, let's talk some food now. Enough of my jibber jabber. Um, these are some of the ingredients that I just want to quickly go through, introduce you to. Uh, let me just turn my tea water down. Okay, so we talked about chilies. These are dry red chilies. You've seen them, I'm sure, in some dishes in your Asian market, in your Chinese restaurant that you go to. These are great when you cook them. They get nice and charred and black. Um, I used to joke with my friends and call them Chinese black carrots, trying to get my friends to eat one. They're really hot. Um, some places use them whole, some places cut them up, and you know, I, I don't mind eating a few of them to just enhance the flavor of the dish that I am eating. Um, let's see, we talked about Szechuan peppercorns, okay, we're going to get more, do more on that. Uh, we have, I am using p potato starch, you could also use corn starch, but the potato starch is just what they use, so this is what I uh, was able to use today. Um, we have, of course, ginger. You're familiar with ginger. Very healthy, very good for you, good for digestion. Use it a lot. Um, we have garlic. I don't need to show you garlic. Uh, so sauce ingredients. I have soy sauce. Both of these contain soy sauce. Okay. This is what they call light soy. It is not necessarily reduce sodium. It's light because it's a lighter consistency, has less molasses in it. Um, this is used for flavoring like you would normal soy sauce, however you would use it. But they also have this. This is dark soy. This is heavier. It's more molasses. This is used not only for flavoring, but also for coloring. I mean, not that. But you can see it's very salty very molassesy and you know it'll leave a stain that's why it's called dark soy so you use that less frequently and in smaller quantities than regular soy sauce next Saoxing wine this is not a cooking wine like those things that you get in a bottle of you know American supermarkets cooking wine <laughs> that's yeah. salt laden I don't know what it's probably rubbing alcohol with salt don't use it <laughs> This is a uh, rice wine, and it's uh, available in different levels of quality and um, um, just different sizes, different colors. This is a dark color. I like it. It's used for marinating meat um, mostly, and uh, really good. And all of these ingredients are a couple of bucks for a bottle. So none of these ingredients are super expensive. Uh, Chinese black vinegar. It is a nice... Uh, it's a, it's a, it's not super strong, but it's got a nice flavor. 
And again, it's dark, so when you're making a dark sauce, you want to use the Chinese black vinegar. Is that in the dumpling sauce? This was in the dumpling sauce, yeah. If you want that acid, you need a little bit of acid. Uh, sesame oil, uh, hopefully most of you are familiar with it. It's pure sesame oil. This is toasted sesame oil. So you can see that it's dark brown. Um, that's exactly what you want. It's nutty. It's, it's got a great fragrance. I love this stuff. Um, the potato dish uh, called for just white vinegar. So I'm using regular white vinegar that I'd use to, you know, my laundry. <laughs> This is an ingredient called cacat manis. This is basically a thick, sweet soy sauce. Um, it's really good. If you taste it, you will you'll, you're, you'd be familiar with the flavor. But it's a it's basically a syrup. It's very thick, almost like honey. And it's I'm not going to eat this whole thing because it's pretty strong. But um, like I said, once you taste it, you'll be you'll you'll know you have tasted it before. Um, again, so we're using this in the Hong Bao Ji Ding. Also sugar, most of the dishes use a little bit of sugar just to offset some of the saltiness. And uh, so we are using sugar, we're using some chicken stock, and the Gong Bao Ji Ding chicken with peanuts. So I got a unsalted, dry roasted. You can buy uh, them in the Asian market as well. They, a lot of them contain salt. I wanted to go with and unsalted, so I got the planters, and I also mixed it, and I'm trying it for the first time with some honey roasted nuts because it is a sweet, it's kind of a sweet and sour sauce. So I wanted to see what uh, effect having the nuts um, honey roasted. Yes, Lynn. Just wanted to point out we have Preston Payne with us, and he really would like you to do a dumpling edition. Okay. And we have Dave Lagarcia, and he's from Key West, and. Al is also with us. Al? And one of the things I just wanted to point out is you yes. saw all of the ingredients come out. Yeah. And what was what's really cool is it feels like a lot. Yeah. But all you do is do all your prep. Yeah. So and what we're going to talk about, you know, when you do Asian cuisines, when you do anything, there's, there's that term mise en place, everything in its place. It's, it's uh, a technique, you know, it's used, you know, in restaurants worldwide and the, the idea is you don't want to be at the stove cooking something and oh no I forgot this and have to go cut some garlic while your stuff burns on the stove you want to have everything in its place go down your ingredients list when you're doing a recipe and prepare everything three tablespoons garlic minced make it put it in a dish go to the next item measure out your liquids just get everything ready and it's especially important when you do Chinese or Asian cuisines, I should say. So, if you notice, that's for my chicken. No, oh, I, can oh, use I can come over to you. Right, but if you notice, no, I'm going to be right here. If you right. notice, I've done just that, and I put it on a tray. Especially when you're doing multiple dishes, you want to have everything set up. And not only that, it's set up on the tray in the order that I'm going to add it to the wok. Just makes things much, much easier. Let me check our rice. Oh, yeah, that is doing really well. Okay. And Patty asked, where do you get these sauces from? We get, I get them, uh, Patty, I, I know you're local. Route 22, there's an Asian market down there. I go down to Edison, there's a couple Asian markets there. Um, so there, it, the stuff's readily available. And you know what, more and more these days, our local regular markets have a, a larger and larger um, Asian section, you know, or international section. So you can get a lot of these things at the regular market, but you're going to pay a lot more for it, for a smaller bottle. Okay, let's talk potatoes, can we? So, shredded potatoes, and because I am not a master chef of the Asian cuisines, I am using my recipe. Um, so it calls for the potatoes being shredded. I used my mandolin. We did this last week. Of course, I have the Michael Jackson glove <laughs> because I'm tired of cutting my finger on this thing. So I'm using this mandolin. Last week, I used my Japanese. This week, I'm using a V cutter. Um, and this has an insert with these little blades. And what that does is it will make julienne strips in one thing. So you, it'll cut it. 
and it'll slice it at the same time. So what you get is you get your potato shreds. Nice. Really nice, really easy to do, you know. And that took seconds to get and through it, half the potato. Yep, took seconds to get through the potato. I am not using that because we have plenty. And I just wanted to show you how it's done. All right, we are going to strain these potatoes. Oh yeah, way more than I need. Okay. Let's let them drain. And I think uh, I'm ready to go to the stove. So let's do it. Let's do this. All right. So. I'm not quite there yet. <laughs> cool. So, I want to once again talk to you guys about this walk mod. I think I've mentioned it to you before. Um, this is an item I bought. I, I, I think it was a kickstart. I'm not even sure. And basically what this is is a ring that you put on your stove and it concentrates the flame. So instead of the flame coming out in a circle, it brings the flame together and the flame comes up in one stream, which what happens is it hits the bottom of the wok, not just around here, and it creates a hotter cooking situation, which you, uh, you know, normally wouldn't have. That's one of the, the challenges with cooking Asian cuisines, especially when you need a hot wok, is you can't get it hot enough. This makes it better. Still doesn't make it like in a restaurant where it's, I don't know how many BTUs those things are. 30,000, 40,000. Um, so we're gonna do the best we can. So I'm gonna heat this mock up and it's been on low. But I wanna heat it up a little tiny bit. The first thing we're gonna add is a little bit of oil, okay? And I don't want it too high because if you put the Szechuan peppercorns and the garlic and the ginger in oil that's too hot, it's all going to burn and you don't want that. So I'm going to add the ginger. Actually, I'm going to add the Szechuan peppercorns first. And you're really just toasting them in the oil. Okay. Nice low heat. You can see they are already sizzling. You just don't want them to burn. So I do that until it gets fragrant. I gotta put this up because you don't want this getting in your lungs for sure. Nice and toasty. And when this the interesting thing about this recipe is right now we're flavoring the oil. So I put in a lot of Szechuan peppercorns. I don't know if you can see what's in here. Okay, a lot of Szechuan peppercorns in there, and basically what we want to do is flavor the oil. I'm going to put a little bit more of the oil in there. It's awesome. And once the, we flavor the oil, we're actually taking the Szechuan peppercorns out. And we'll, we will discard them because we don't really need that many Szechuan peppercorns. It's okay if you leave a few in there. I mean, I'm not going to go nuts trying to get them all. And you can see the wok is starting to smoke. So that's okay. Is it a good thing for it to smoke? It's okay. Because what you're going to do is, we're going to put the ginger and the garlic in, and you got to watch it. If you think that the ginger and the garlic are starting to go too fast, and that's perfectly fine. You want it to sizzle. So I've got that in there. We're just going to stir it around. Nice. Okay, I'm going to add the chilies in. That's going to bring the temperature down a little bit. Get in there. You don't want to go. Okay. And it's okay. Usually you're thinking, well, this is it's not very high heat. And you're right, it's not. Okay, so all the ginger garlic is 
now flavoring the Szechuan peppercorn oil. And um, once that gets going a little bit, we're throwing in our potato. Again, I don't think I'm going to put in all of this. I'm just going to put in most of it. And Paul Boney asked, how long do you soak potatoes in the water? Um, no specific amount of time. The whole, the whole thing about soaking them in water, Paul, is you want to whisk away some of the starch. These were, um, the potatoes that I used were a Yukon Dole, so it's more of a waxy potato, but you want to get rid of the starch, and you want it in ice cold water. You don't need ice cubes, but that cold water keeps these things <clears throat> really crisp. So, and it also prevents the potato from sticking to the lock. So we have the potatoes in. <clears throat> Fry. I'm going to turn it up now. And the potatoes really, I mean, I was nibbling on these raw. It was perfectly fine. You can see they're going to get nice and shiny. Really awesome. And Dan Baker said it looks great. Paul Bologna starts. And Dan Baker also said, fire is your friend. Fire is my friend. But I learned, you know, all, all the recipes that I followed said, yeah, heat the wok on high, throw in the Szechuan peppercorns, the ginger, and the garlic. It's nearly impossible not to burn the ginger, garlic, and Szechuan peppercorns. So I've learned a little bit, and if I wanted to do it in a real hot wok, like I'm doing the chicken, I'll put the chicken in first, and then I'll put the Szechuan peppercorns and those other things in after the chicken brings the temperature of the wok down a little bit. So basically, we're just sauteing these. Beautiful thing. Just gonna scrape the bottom. Just keep it moving so they don't stick. Okay, now. And that's good. Next thing we're adding is soy sauce. Adding our flavor now. We're adding sugar. Sugar is going to caramelize and a nice flavor to it. Hopefully, we banging on the wok it isn't too loud. Cranking it. We're adding our vinegar. That was that white vinegar. Nice. Sesame oil. And it all in. Building the flavor. Chicken stock. Bring that up to a boil. Merle. Colleen Jones said that she's making some stuffed quail. I just wondering if she could do Japanese ingredients with them. Sure. They're quite salt though. It's okay. You could add a little salt. Under the white vinegar. Uh, in, under the white vinegar. Cover this. Thank you. Just a little pinch of salt. Okay, covering it for 45 seconds. This dish is just about done. And El Nino said it. I bet it smells great. No, it does. Uh, I, I, I'm. I kind of feel the spice. You do? Yeah. Bit. It's not. It's not as bad. Is it? Are you using the same peppers as? Um, I used, uh, actually I used a serrano pepper. Okay. okay. Once that is done like that, we're adding scallions. We're going to toss that around. This dish is done. I'm going to bring it over here. Get this over here, babe. Shredded potato with peppers. All right. Awesome. So that'll be our first dish. So put a little, <laughs> put a little bit of green on there just for presentation purposes. 
time sure ready to flat fire. Okay. The fire. There's the fire. That's I'm going to wipe out my wop real quick while Lynn does that. As you guys enjoy the fire. I'm coming around over here. So I'm just, uh, if you ever get stuff that's baked on the wok, they make these bamboo brushes. And what you'll do is you'll put the water in and you'll basically stir it around. You'll see they use these or they use other things, you know, Chinese restaurants. But this, uh, this wok I've had for, I don't know, 15, maybe 20 years. And it is the most non-stick surface of any of my things. You can see it's carbon steel and it is like butter. All right, now, for this dish, I'm going to put this on high. I want to get it nice and hot. And now I have already cooked some of the chicken ahead of time because I've done a lot. So um, I wanted to do that so I wouldn't bore you. Sorry, excuse me for getting off camera. I'm going to bring these ingredients over here. And Larry Rhodes said, I'm hungry. Do you deliver? Nice. <laughs> $5 charge. Uh, is Larry local? I don't know. Hold on, let me get to the recipe. All right, so I'm going to get this wok nice and hot. I want to show you something called seasoning. So to season a wok, and you, you should do it before you use it every time, just a little tiny bit of oil over high heat, okay? And paper towel. Basically, you just want to rub it around. It coats the coats the wok, just like that. And that's basically what they call seasoning the wok. So you're going to do that even before you start cooking. Now, this I really want this to get hot because I'm going to do yeah. this chicken, and I want the chicken to caramelize a little bit. I want to come back in and look at the flame again. All right. Look at the flame. Just look at that. That's crazy. Yeah. So that's that's the wokmon in action. And if, yeah, if you want to compare it to this, if I had it on my regular burner. Uh, is that the back one? Yeah. No. Uh-oh. Houston, we have a problem. All right. All right. We're going to have to leave that for the next time. That little demo. Yes, Sabrina. You don't. The only reason why you need this ring is because it's, it can be sometimes unstable. So that ring keeps it nice and stable. Remember, kids, safety third. <laughs> I always say. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Mary McRae, what kind of oil was used? And she also commented, you have such a command of the kitchen. So the oil, thank you for that, your kind words. Um, you want a high heat oil, and um, most of the time it's peanut oil used in Chinese restaurants, Asian cooking. Um, if you didn't want to use peanut oil, you can use another high oil, uh, smoke point oil like uh, avocado or grapeseed. My uh, Thai friends uh, from Bon Palais use uh, uh, avocado oil exclusively. Uh, it's perfectly perfectly good oil. It's got a nice mild flavor. Uh, but I, uh, going for authenticity, I'm using peanut oil. All right. So we also have Good Job Buddy from Nino. And nice. Sam Mann asked a question, does one ever season the water used to steam the rice? I'm not aware that they do. You, I don't see why you couldn't. But, you, you know, I have not heard that as being a common practice. Speaking of oil, talked about the Szechuan peppercorns. This is a product that is available in your Asian market. This is Szechuan peppercorn oil. Very numbing, very potent. You use it very sparingly. So if you wanted a dish and you wanted to up that level of numbing from the Szechuan peppercorn, you can add, you can add that. All right, kids. Now it's going to get real. So now we got a ripping hot block. I'm going to turn this all the way up. Now I'm putting in my cooking oil. Smoky. Okay. Sorry to interrupt, but are you doing anything with the copper pot? 
Uh, that just has some water in it for tea. Okay, we're still eating it. Yep. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Now we're getting real. So what's going to happen with this chicken, it's going gonna, it's gonna to clump right now, but it's going to start to separate like that. And I don't know if you can get this in on the camera. Yep. And so even though this is heating up for a long time, you can tell it quieted down a little bit. So I'm just going to like just leave it sit here and I want to get a nice caramelization of it. And because it cooled down, at this point, we're going to add Szechuan peppercorn. What's that? Okay, my chicken. Good question, Sabrina. Uh, just, to, my, just put in the Szechuan peppercorn and the dried chili. The chicken I'm using is boneless, skinless chicken thighs. Um, Primarily, that's what they're going to use in Chinese restaurant. Not the chicken breast. Too dry, cooks too quick. The, you need this forgiving nature of the chicken thighs to, uh, you know, for, for such high heat cooking. I'm putting in the sliced garlic and I'm putting in the sliced ginger. All the aromatics are going to help the flavor of this awesome dish. And you can see I'm getting some great caramelization on the chicken. Oh, we had a jumper. Beautiful thing. And you just want to toss it around constantly. Now, if we were in an uh, Asian restaurant with the wok burner, I mean, this would happen, you know, in half the time. Even though I've got the wok on, even though it makes a huge difference, you still, you, you know, you still got to take a little bit more time than you would in an Asian restaurant. So, stir frying, and I don't know if you can see, but there is absolutely nothing sticking to this to this wok. Nothing. And you can see the beautiful caramelization happening on the meat. So. Exactly what you want. So at this point, I'm cooking the chicken all the way through. And like I said, if you're doing a lot, uh, you can do it in batches like I did. that chicken is cooked through. All right, I'm going to put in the scallions. Get some caramelization on those. And at this point, we've got two things, the sauce and we've got the chicken, I mean the peanuts. So the sauce is, and I'm going to tell you right now, the sauce is that uh, dark soy, light soy, that Chinese black vinegar, sesame oil, the potato starch, chicken stock, and that cat manis, remember that thick, sweet soy? It's going to be awesome. Alright, this is just about done. I'm going to add back in the chicken that I had done earlier just to bring it back up to temperature. I think I'm gonna leave part of it out because I don't think we need that much. And I need room in the wok. So at this point, it just looks like chicken. Not a, not a great color in my book, but it's fine because once we hit that sauce, all bets are off. The sauce will thicken, it'll caramelize, it'll be sweet. Delicious. Alright. I 
want to take this water. I want to make sure that we have enough water and it didn't boil off. Yeah. Can you give me some more water in here, babe? Really hot. You want more water in the pot? Yeah. Okay. For our tea. Alright. Any questions, please ask. Use more. Alright. I'm happy with this. So now what I want to do is I'm going to try and push the chicken to the sides. Leave a nice open spot for me to pour in the sauce. Oh, crisscross applesauce. Alright. Cool. Wanna switch with me then? Yep. Alright. Yeah. Because this sauce has starch in it that will sink to the bottom, you want to just give it a quick stir. Put your finger, stir up the sugar. Alright. Here we go. In goes the sauce. I'm going to turn it down just a little. Just continue to stir. And this sauce is going to thicken right on this chicken. And make a lovely, thick, rich. You can see the color of the chicken change. That is from the dark soy. That is from the Kit Kat Manise. And you can see it's becoming like a caramel. So that wok is immediately caramelizing. It's really good. How did you guys get the smell of A lot of sauce. It's at this point, we're adding our peanuts. Not even going to add all those. Side base, and I'm going to get ready to plate. All right, you can smell that sugar starting to caramelize, and that's what you want. Almost like a burnt sugar flavor in the best way possible. Look at that. Mmm. Nice. All right. I may have put in a little less sauce, but, you know, such is life. Sorry, did you have too much or too little? Yeah, it's a little saucy, and the way I get it at my favorite Sichuan restaurant, Route 22, Green Brook, Shenduan Palace. Okay, I'm going to come in and take another look. All right, close. and I'm going to pull it off. There we go. Long Bao Ji Ding. I'm turning off the fire. We're plating at the cutting board. People. I don't know if that's enough. Silly. Now what I want to do is I'm going to take a couple of sprigs of scallion. Let me over here as a garnish. A nice bias. Does that mean on an angle? Yes. Okay. Paul Florio. There we go. All right. Now, may I please have my plate? 
<laughs> because this is my favorite time of the, of the day here at Plating. the Grateful Chef. Got these lovely plates, flea market. They were like dirt cheap. Very bright? Yeah. All right, sorry. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my rice cooker and grab a little bit of rice. ginger and I'm going to grab some of the potato right off the top and you zoom in on yeah. the plate it's lovely and grab one of these so let me show you these we never really talked about them this is the lotus leaf wrapped sticky rice so I'm going to unwrap they tie it with a little bit of thread. And I'll show you what you got inside. Okay. Unwrap them. Almost like a tamale. I can smell the banana, the lotus leaf. It's like a smoky flavor. And you can see how very sticky it is. Really sticky. So I'm going to put it right on my plate. Did you get a close up of that, honey? That's awesome. That's perfect. All right, let's okay. see. So I'm going to go with the potato first. Hmm. Really simple. Not a not a strong flavor. But in fact, I think you could use a little bit more soy. So I'm going to put. That's the dark. I want to put just a little bit of light soy on there. Give it a little bit of salty component. Hmm. Really good. Now, it's chicken. I'm looking for like a candied flavor. Hmm. Got it. Spicy, sweet, spicy. Did I say it's spicy? Um, Do you have the numbing flavor? Or the the Szechuan peppercorns, totally numbing. And it doesn't happen like immediately, but. You can tell this. There's a floral flavor. Jay well, Judge has a nice one. Hmm. A little bit of the rice. Hey Jay. Well, let me see if I can dig into this sticky rice. Oh yeah, it's nice. I was right. I got the meat. So you can see there's like a nice, long cooked, almost like a. I'm, I'm guessing it's pork inside. Hmm. Delicious. Absolutely delicious. So, I will no longer torture you. By eating in front of you. Torture us. Torture you guys. <laughs> um, so again, I express my complete and utter gratitude to you, my Grateful Chef family. Uh, happy that you're along for the journey. I'm happy that I can do this for you. Um, I hope you enjoyed this uh, Chinese New Year, Gong Hai Fa Choi, um, Year of the Pig. Hope you enjoyed this celebration with me. Um, again, programming note, will not be a show next Wednesday unless uh, I do it at 2 o'clock in the morning from Barcelona, mm. <laughs> which probably won't... Uh, we will, we'll be on a plane then. Oh, well, we'll be on a plane on Wednesday, but maybe I'll, you know, we'll be there for a couple of days. So if I can work it out, if I can do some sort of video, maybe post it later, I will. Um, it's a well-needed, quick little jaunt, that uh, little rest that... Lynn and I are going to take for a couple days, um, but we'll be right back after and do another great show. Yes, Lynn? i say if we do one next Wednesday, it will be basically airport food. 
<laughs> Airport food. <laughs> Woohoo! That's boring. Um, yeah, so we won't do it, but maybe uh, I have uh, some chef friends there, so maybe I'll be able to do some sort of food related video. I mean, I can shoot some video at the markets and all that stuff. Um, it's a really interesting place, but we will talk about that when we get back. Anyway, I want to bid you a great evening. I ask you, who's calling me? That's <laughs> oh, my mom and dad. Hi, mom. Still on. <laughs> that proves they're not watching. Anyway, um, so I, I bid you uh, good eating. I bid you peace and love and gratitude in everything that you do. And we will see you next episode of Cooking in the Grateful Chef Kitchen with Eric Eisenberg. Peace!